Camille walked down Umbrel Street, already regretting having taken that shortcut, but she wanted to be in time for dinner. She looked at the flickering street lights. Monsters don't exist. That I know for sure, she kept telling herself. I'm a big girl. I'm already ten. Monsters do not exist. Oh, but we do, said a whisper behind her. She turned back, afraid to watch, and the monster was there. She stood paralyzed. He was big and nasty. He was made of night, twelve feet of thicker darkness, no eyes in his awful face, and arms as thin as tendrils. She ran back home, and it followed her, matching her speed effortlessly, and when she closed the door behind her, it was already inside the house. The next day, he was still there in the corner of her bedroom. He didn't talk. He sat with her in the kitchen as she ate her breakfast. She got used to it, to the horror lurking in every corner. She could have almost forgotten it until the day it talked again. That is not the square root of 144, it told her. You should pay more attention in class. She put her homework down and looked at it startled, but she dared to reply. If you know so much, come solve this problem. And it climbed down from the ceiling and finished her homework on a whim. Wow, she said, you're good at this. Thanks, said the monster, blushing darker. I've always liked math, but I never could take lessons, being a monster and all. You're the first person who ever talked to me. And you? What are you? asked Camille, overcoming her fear. Well, I don't know, admitted the monster. I just follow people around being all spooky. It gives me something to do. Monsters live in a world of dust, cobwebs, shadowy corners, and that one room in every building that is always one degree colder than the rest. He introduced her to others, the man who is only there if you really squint your eyes, the hundred hungry mouths. The faceless lady haunts empty offices, corridors, staircases. The color of her suit mimics the paint on the walls, so when you see her, it's already too late. The upside-down face pressing against the glass at night. The twitching kid, the ragged figure, beckoning under a streetlight. Once Camille saw something white and swollen disappearing around a corner, but when she asked about it, the monster just hushed her and told her to go home. Monsters and people, it's complicated, it told her, raising a skeletal finger. We live to haunt you, to feed on your fears. Without you, we are nothing. And yet we are scary, or so you say. We are not. We are scared. Hungry and cold, we miss the old darkness before electricity, before the cities. Camille was no longer afraid of the night, for her monster was with her, who guided her gently into the darkness deep and whispered her secret things while falling asleep.